President, Nobel Peace Prize winner, all labels describing Václav Havel, who's died at the age of 75. He became Czechoslovakia's first democratically elected president after leading the non-violent Velvet Revolution of 1989 that ended four decades of communism rule. His assistant said he passed away at his weekend house in the northern Czech Republic. Ben Brown looks back at the life of one of the leading figures of European politics. For Václav Havel and for his people, everything changed in November 1989, the year of Czechoslovakia's Velvet Revolution, when an extraordinary display of people power led by Havel proved irresistible and toppled the ruling communist regime. The world watched with astonishment as within weeks the dissident playwright became president. Václav Havel was born in 1936, and by his own admission, he was a pampered child from a wealthy family. But when the communists came to power, he saw his family lose everything. With the 1960s came the Prague Spring, led by Alexander Dubček, the first flowering of reform and of hope for Czechoslovakia. Havel, now a successful playwright, could openly criticize old guard Stalinists, satirizing them in drama that won instant worldwide acclaim. But in 1968, Soviet tanks crushed the dreams of Havel and his generation. Suddenly, his work was banned in Czechoslovakia. A few years later, he helped found the Charter 77 Movement for Democratic Change. Václav Havel had become Czechoslovakia's most famous dissident, jailed for the alleged crime of anti-state activity, and even when he was out of prison, kept under constant surveillance by the secret police. But by the end of 1989, Havel found himself discussing the future of the nation with the very people who had sent him to jail. The Communist Party was disintegrating, democracy was taking its place. A grateful nation had only one choice for head of state, and in a solemn service at Prague's Roman Catholic Cathedral, Havel was duly installed. The prisoner turned president said afterwards that he had never felt so absurd. And indeed, the fairy tale soon went sour. Slovakian nationalists campaigned for and won independence. Havel's beloved country divided into two. Its president was shouted down by demonstrators. He commented that after every party, there's a hangover. Havel resigned the presidency, only to be re-elected leader of the new Czech Republic a few months later. Never a natural professional politician, Havel was uncomfortable with the pomp and ceremony that surrounded him. He longed to return to full-time writing, which was perhaps why his people so loved and respected him. This, after all, was the man who had not only destroyed their communist oppressors, but who had managed to do so without bloodshed. Jerzy Schneider is first Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs. I asked him how the Czech people are receiving the news of Václav Havel's death. I can hardly speak uh, uh, how it will be taken by the Czech public uh, because we are still at shock, although it's been known that uh, uh, President Havel's health uh, was in poor shape uh, for at least uh, uh, recent months. Uh, so I think uh, there is still uh, a sense of shock and, uh, and gloom and uh, uh, I think it will take uh, days be before it will be uh, actually realized what, uh, what happened and uh, uh, who is missing actually. As a hero of uh, the non-violent movements which later became famous as the Velvet Revolutions, something that we have been witnessing uh, in several other spots around the world in the past year or so as well, um, what do you think is his international presence or importance globally? I think uh, President Havel was, uh, uh, was uh, at the uh, right moment, at critical moment, uh, a uniting uh, figure which uh, was able, who was able to actually uh, uh, make these uh, uh, remarkable changes happen, uh, uh, as you said, uh, without uh, violence and smoothly. Uh, he was a person uh, who united, although later on, I think, uh, uh, when he entered uh, politics, uh, which is divisive by, uh, by nature, I think, of course, he was criticized and, uh, and uh, 
he was felt more uniting, I think, from abroad than uh, than from at home. I think he was uh, a, a extremely important person and politician to put Czechoslovakia and later on Czech Republic on the political map. Uh, it wasn't just uh, getting rid of the former uh, communist system, but uh, he was he was very uh, important. I think without him, it would be much harder to uh, get. Czech Republic and other uh, countries in the region into into NATO and European Union uh, uh, back to uh, the family of three nations. I think that's uh, uh, his achievement, and uh, and we will remain grateful to him. More than 21 years ago, Václav Havel, playwright and political prisoner, stood before a crowd of hundreds of thousands in Vincislas Square in Prague. Their demands were for freedom, democracy, and human rights. He was not your typical picture of a hero. He was not, uh, he was not a big man. He was small. He was soft-spoken. He was shy. He had a tendency to sort of, you know, mumble. He had this very deep voice, and he would mumble his thoughts to himself in these long, swirling Central European sentences with caveats and counterthoughts. Uh, and yet, somehow, through all this, he had a moral clarity, which simply with his writing and his speaking and the way he pointed out the ridiculousness and the absurdity of the Czechoslovak communist system, he, he, he picked away at it and picked away at it and made fun of it until ultimately it simply collapsed. Jonathan? I, I want to go back to, to your remark about how shy he was, because how does a shy poet and playwright who had been beaten down by the regime for years, how does a man like that end up as president? He, he said he had no interest in politics. It's true. Uh, and in fact, there are, there are stories about how uh, Czechoslovak dissidents uh, in the 1980s would sit around and say, you know, it's a shame we don't have a charismatic figure like the Poles have Lech Wałęsa, for example. And someone said, you know what, we, we've got Václav, and I think you'll be surprised. You know, he, he was thrust into this position. He was not necessarily the only leader of the Velvet Revolution. Uh, he was the one who, who, who was pushed forward. The crowds demanded him in 1989 when he appeared uh, in Wenceslas Square in the center of Prague. The, the crowds chanted, hobble to the castle hobbled to the castle. They wanted him, uh, and he stepped forward, and he led the country uh, through very difficult times, a difficult transition uh, into the free market, into Europe, into NATO, into the European Union. He fought against the breakup of Czechoslovakia, and he, he lost that battle. He was not, you know, a philosopher king who could just impose his will on the country. He lost a lot of political battles. Well, I want to ask you about in that, end, in fact, uh, because in, in a sense, like, like I guess many international figures, some people said he's more popular mm -hmm. outside of his own country than he was inside of it. Um, how popular was he after his presidency ended? Um, as, as a, because he still tried to speak as a moral voice for the country. I don't think you'll find anyone in, in the Czech Republic or Slovakia today who will not be hailing him as a hero. But certainly in the time when he was president, he did try to lead from above. He, he, he issued these long statements and these moral speeches. And I'm not sure that everybody in the country warmed to them. And Czechoslovakia very rapidly developed a hardball political style, political parties, alliances, parliamentary maneuvering. And Havel never wanted to play that game. He didn't have a faction. He didn't have a party. And I think as a result of that, he did, you know, he did lose some major battles. He did not want Czechoslovakia to split up. He was not you know, entirely satisfied about the way things went. And he issued these statements from the hill and the castle overlooking Prague. But a, a lot of those statements day to day were you know, ignored or simply trodden on by Czech politicians. Czechoslovakia's first democratically elected president has passed away. Václav Havel, the playwright turned political activist, a man who stood up for human rights and spent more than four years in prison for fighting Czechoslovakia's then communist government. He led his country's peaceful overthrow of communism with his uh, civic forum uh, movement. He was an unlikely hero uh, of the young people in that country who rallied around him and demanded that he become the first president of Czechoslovakia and then of course the Czech Republic. He oversaw the fact that that separation from Slovakia was a peaceful one at a time when the war in Bosnia was brewing and leaders who sought political power uh, led their countries into death and chaos. Václav Havel said 
he never wanted to be a politician. He never wanted the power. Václav Havel, dead at 75.